Hello, I'm Matthew Sutton. I'm a graduate student in the laboratory of Shelby O'Connor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And today I'd like to discuss a project I've been working on evaluating the importance of CD8 T cell responses that target variable epitopes in SIV. To study this, we employ a model of SIV MAC239 infected MHC identical Mauritian cinemologous macaques, or MCMs. Specifically, we use MCMs homozygous for the M3 MHC haplotype, as these animals have variable epitopes that have been characterized by our lab as well as others. Notably, previous data from our laboratory suggest that T cells targeting epitopes that accumulate variants are necessary for virus control. Accordingly, we hypothesize that the loss of CD8 T cells targeting variable epitopes decreases the efficient detection of virus infected cells. To test this hypothesis, we are doing the following things. First, we'd like to create SIV delta NF ADEX, a derivative of SIV MAC239 delta NF with point mutations in the eight epitopes restricted by the M3 MHC haplotype that are known to accumulate variants. Throughout this talk, I will refer to SIV delta NF ADEX as the ADEX virus and SIV MAC239 delta NF as simply wild type delta NF. Second, we will grow the ADEX virus and test its in vitro replicative fitness. Next, we will infect MCMs and compare the viral load set point to that seen in MHC identical animals infected with wild type delta NF. Finally, we would like to assess CD8 T cell responses and determine the functionality of CD8 T cells that are potentially directed towards less variable epitopes. By doing this, we are hoping to determine whether acute CD8 T cells targeting non-escaping epitopes can emerge during acute infection and control virus replication. The cartoon here shows the eight epitopes restricted by the M3 MHC haplotype following SIV MAC239 infection. Deep sequencing has identified high frequency epitope variants at each of these positions, and interferon gamma L spot assays allowed us to determine which of these variant epitopes were able to avoid immune detection in vitro. Once a variant at each of the eight epitopes was identified that could avoid T cell recognition, we engineered these variants into wild type delta NF and grew the virus in cell culture. With the virus grown, we next wanted to test the in vitro replicative fitness of the 8X virus relative to wild type delta NF to ensure that these mutations we made in the eight epitopes didn't have a fitness cost to the virus. To accomplish this, we combined a barcoded wild type delta NF in different ratios of nanogram P27 content with one of our query viruses, either the wild type delta NF or the 8X virus. Virus mixtures were incubated with CEM X174 cells, and supernat supernatant was sampled over time, with a number of copies of query virus and barcoded virus being determined by qRT-PCR. A ratio of the number of query virus to barcoded virus was made, and then compared to the ratio present in the inoculum to determine how well this ADEX virus infected cells and replicated in vitro compared to wild type delta NF. As can be seen in these graphs, there were no considerable in vitro replicative fitness differences between our ADEX virus and wild type delta NF. Once we determined that the mutations contained within this ADEX virus didn't have an in vitro fitness cost, we decided to evaluate our virus in vivo, so we decided to infect MCMs. As you can see in this graph in black, a group of four MCMs infected with our ADEX virus showed delayed in vivo viral control compared to four MHC identical animals infected with a wild type delta NF virus seen in red. Currently, we are continuing to follow viral loads in these animals to see if we see any type of rebound over time. While observing trends in viral load over time in these ADEX infected animals, we also want to determine by interferon gamma L spot assays whether CD8 T cells were being redirected towards new epitopes. Peptides used for stimulation can be seen along the x-axis and can be divided into two categories. The first eight bars on the left represent mutated ADEX epitopes and were tested to determine in vivo immunogenicity. Those remaining bars to the right represent newly targeted epitopes. Full proteome interferon gamma L spot assays were also performed early in weeks three and eight, with peptide pool deconvolutions being performed later in the week. As you can see in this graph, with the number of spot forming cells per 10 to the 6 PBMC shown along the y axis, one to two of the variant epitopes included in our ADEX virus remained immunogenic. However, we did observe CD8 T cells that were redirected towards new epitopes following infection with significant responses denoted with asterisks above the bar. Given that the viral control was observed in MCMs infected with this ADEX virus, 
We also wanted to test whether immune responses mounted by these animals were capable of suppressing wild-type delta-NF replication. To do this, we performed in vitro viral suppression assays at select time points by incubating CD8 T cells isolated from the ADEX infected animals with target cells either infected with the ADEX virus or the wild type Delta NF virus. One might expect that since we deleted the immunodominant variable epitopes that are targeted following SIV MAC239 infection of M3 homozygous MCMs, the suppression of wild type Delta NF would be deficient. As you can see in this figure though, CD8 T cells isolated from 8X infected MCMs were able to suppress viral replication of target cells infected with the 8X virus. One might expect, since we deleted the immunodominant variable epitopes that are targeted following SIV MAC239 infection of M3 homozygous MCMs, that suppression of wild type Delta NF would be deficient. As you can see in this figure, CD8 T cells isolated from 8X infected animals were able to suppress viral replication of target cells infected with the 8X virus during the acute phase of infection, but this function was lost when tested at weeks 8 and 12. Surprisingly, moderate viral suppression was observed for target cells infected with wild type Delta NF at all points tested. In conclusion, we have shown that we were able to engineer a derivative of SIV MAC239 Delta NF with mutations in immunodominant variable epitopes, and that this virus had no in vitro replicative fitness cost compared to the unmutated wild type Delta NF. Furthermore, we have shown that T cell immunogenicity is absent for the majority of the eight M3 restricted mutated variable epitopes included in the ADEX virus. Finally, we have observed that CD8 T cell responses targeting previously unknown epitopes can emerge during acute infection and result in delayed in vivo control of virus replication. Moving forward with this project, we have infected M3 M3 animals with our SIV Delta NF 8X virus, and we have also infected a very important control group of animals, those MCMs that share no common MHC alleles with the M3 animals. Currently, we are also further characterizing the newly identified epitopes, both in the animals presented within this talk and the ones that are currently under uh, infection. I'd like to acknowledge a member of Shelby O'Connor's laboratory, uh, particularly Amy Ellis and Lexi Balderman for their help with this project, as well as Shelby O'Connor herself for her great mentoring. I'd also like to thank members of the AVRL. Uh, Gabrielle and Andrea did a great job with a lot of our viral load assays and members of the Wisconsin National Primate Research Center uh, with their help and support throughout this project. Uh, we'd also like to thank our funding with without that none of this would be possible.